Amen. Well, today we're going to begin a brand new series called It's Okay. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's okay. It's okay. See, with so many telling you that it's not, I want to tell you that it is. Amen. See, see, all too often we as humans, and especially we Americans, set the bar too high. We reach for what is unreachable. We set goals for ourselves that are unattainable. And then we have to deal with disappointment. Am I being negative? Absolutely not. I'm being real. See, there's been so much overemphasis. I'm not saying there shouldn't be an emphasis, but there has been so much overemphasis on being positive that reality has become blurred. Just say you can, and you can, we're told. Second place is first loser, they tell us. Your only limitation is you, they say. And on and on and on, rah, rah, rah. Problem with that, it's not real. It's not reality. See, the reality is we can, every single one of us, we can all excel in something, but not in everything. In this series, I'm going to tell you that it's okay. I'm going to tell you that it's okay if you're not the brightest star in the universe, as long as you shine as bright as you're capable of. I'm going to tell you that it's okay. It's okay if you don't make it to number one, as long as as you do your best. I'm going to tell you that it's okay if you don't meet all of the expectations of man as long as you hear Jesus say, well done, good, and faithful servant. Now, let me be perfectly clear this morning. Let me clarify why I, what I am not saying. I'm not saying it's okay to be lazy. I'm not saying it's okay to be mediocre. I'm saying do your best and let God take care of all the rest. As we begin our series today, we're going to begin with this. It's okay to say no. It's okay to say no. And I'm going to give you five things that it's okay to say no to. Number one, it's okay to say no to unrealistic expectations. In Acts chapter 3, we find recorded the story of the lame man who sat by the gate of the temple every single day. He is set there. His family brings him and sits him there, and he sits on that cot day after day after day after day with a beggar's cup begging for money. Well, the story says that Peter and, and uh, John happened by one day, and verse number 5 says that this lame man expected to receive some money from them. Well, if you'll read the story, you'll see that Peter responded to him by saying, we don't have what you're expecting. We don't have what you are expecting from us, but what we do have, we're willing to share with you. Friends, hear me this morning. It's okay to say no to unrealistic expectations. Here, here's what I know, and that is the quickest way to failure is to try and meet everybody's expectations. In the case of the lame man in Acts chapter 3, he expected from Peter, he expected from John something that they did not have to give. How often do people expect from us what we do not have to give? How often do people place on us unrealistic expectations, expecting from us what we simply do not have to give? It happens in marriage, it happens at work, it happens with friendships, it happens in sports, it happens in school, why, it even happens at church. And let me say this this morning, how often do we place unrealistic expectations on ourselves? Now, there was a time in my life, in my ministry, when I worked seven days a week. Seven days a week, I, I was at the church every single day of the week, Monday through Saturday, I was at the church. And Sunday, 
I was at church. Pastor, why would you do that? Here's why I did that, because I didn't want anyone placing me in the pastor's only work one day a week category. <laughs> Until seven days a week, you found me at the church. No longer. Here's what I've learned. We will never be able to meet everybody's expectations. It doesn't matter how hard we try. It doesn't matter how many hours we work. No matter what we do or no matter what we don't do, we will never be able to meet the expectations of people. Here's the bottom line this morning. There's only one person we really need to please, and his name is Jesus. Name is Jesus. Too many people are like the truck driver that, that would stop his truck every few blocks. He would jump out of his truck. He would take a two-by-four, and he would beat on the side of his truck with a two-by-four. About every two or three blocks, he would do that. He would jump out of his truck. He would take the two-by-four. He would go out to the truck, and he would beat on the side of the truck. One day, a cop stopped him and asked him, what in the world are you doing, man? The trucker responded, he said, I am hauling two tons of canaries and I only have a one-ton truck. <laughs> he said, I have to keep half of the canaries up in the air at all times. <laughs> I know a lot of people that live their life that way. I, I've lived my life that way in times past. Hear me this morning, people who live their lives trying to please everyone will resemble that illustration. I've got a word for somebody here this morning, and the word for you this morning is it's okay to say no. It's okay to say no to unrealistic expectations. It's okay to resign the position of Superman or Wonder Woman. Second thing I'd like to say this morning, and that is it's okay to say no to unhealthy relationships. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14 says, Don't team up with unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? And 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33 says that bad company corrupts good character. You've heard me say it a thousand times. I'll say it again. We become like the people we spend the most time with. I remember when my kids were teenagers. My wife and I loved it when school was out for the year. We loved it when we had our kids at home for the summer. We loved that time. We were blessed with awesome kids. Neither one of them ever got into any serious trouble, at least none that we ever found out about. But there was a difference. There was a difference in time of school and time when school was out for the summer. There was a difference in them and especially in their attitudes when they did not have the influence of some of their school friends and of that school environment. See, summer was filled with youth camp. It was filled with youth group activities. It was filled with, 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 with internships. It was a much better environment. Let me ask you this morning, who are you hanging out with? Who are you hanging out with? Listen, listen, I refuse to hang out with negative pastors. I refuse to join the preacher choir that consistently sings the blues. Not gonna happen. Listen up this morning, any relationship, get this, any relationship that is divisive or pulls you away from the Lord should be terminated. Now, let me clarify that everyone is allowed to have a bad day every now and then. But the people in our lives that are consistently critical, who are always involved in drama, who continually try to stir things up, as Kimberly Sweet Brown Wilkins said, ain't nobody got time for that. It's okay to say no to unhealthy relationships. Paul writes in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 6, stay away from idle and disruptive believers. Say, stay away from. Stay away from. 
There you go. You have one job. Hey, I cannot tell you how many times I have witnessed people change for the worse after hanging around certain people for a while. Like begets like. The series is it's okay. Today we're talking about the fact it's okay to say no. Listen, it's okay to say no, number three, to unrighteous demands. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17 says to come out from among the wicked and be separate. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 10 says, when sinners entice you, do not yield. Here's the simple truth this morning. That is sinner's sin. Unrighteous people are, are unrighteous. Yes, of course they're going to tempt you to sin. Of course they're going to expect you to participate in their activities. Hear me this morning, the, that, that sinner boyfriend is going to pressure you to have sex with him. Those sinner friends are going to expect you to go party with them. Here's what you need to understand this morning. God not only wants to, wants to save us, he also wants to sanctify us. Amen. Now, we don't hear that word sanctify very much in church. It's not really a very cool word, but it's a very important word. What is sanctification? Well, sanctification is a process where God changes us from who we are into who he wants us to be. The Bible says salvation happens in an instant. If you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved, the Bible says. Salvation happens in an instant. Sanctification takes a lifetime. Let me give you some practical ways to ensure that you are being sanctified. The first one is possess a consistent prayer life. If you're going to be sanctified, you're going to have a prayer life. You're going to communicate. You're going to fellowship. You're going to talk to God on a daily basis. Study the scriptures. Don't just read your three favorites, Psalms 23 and whatever it might be. Study. To show yourself approved unto God. A workman needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Get yourself under a pastor who preaches and teaches a balanced message. Get plugged into a discipleship ministry. Make the decision to live a life that pleases God and lines up with Scripture. Walk close to God. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal any area in your life that needs improvement or that is not godly. Choose your friends carefully. Yeah, God not only wants to save us, he also wants to sanctify us. He also wants to set us apart. He also wants to mold and make us into the image of his dear son. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I was growing up, the pendulum swung to the extreme into legalism into the, in the church. I'm afraid the pendulum has swung to the extreme in the opposite direction today. When I was growing up, the preachers called everything a sin. If it was fun, it was sin. <laughs> Today, most preachers are calling nothing a sin. God, give us a healthy balance. I don't want to go back to legalism. Man, that's, it's awful. It's awful. It's bondage. And it's not God's will. And I want to go back to legalism. But listen, let's, let, let, let's move that pendulum back in the middle somewhere. Let there be some balance. God, give us a godly, a healthy balance. God, help us preach the truth and not personal convictions. The truth and not just our opinion. The truth and not just what we've heard. The truth, even if it's not politically correct. The truth, even if it's not popular. Jesus said, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Let's talk about the fourth thing it's okay to say no to, and that is it's okay to say no to unqualified opinions. Now, I could get myself into trouble with this one. If I'm not careful, I can lose my sanctification. <laughs> 
It's just absolutely amazing to me how smart some people are. I mean, brilliant. Brilliant. Smarter than everybody else. It's amazing how about some people seem to be experts about everything. They've never pastored a church, but they know everything about what a pastor ought to do and ought not do. It's amazing. They've never coached. They've never even played sports. But they're critical of every decision that coach makes. They're experts in every field, marriage, parenting, politics, finances, music, fashion, sports, church. How can this be? And the answer, it can't. It can't. No one is the all in all. Even if they set themselves up to be. It's okay to say no. It's okay to say no to unqualified Opinions. I love what the wisdom writer wrote in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 15. He writes and he says, only simpletons believe everything they're told. Goes on to say the prudent carefully weigh every matter. Remember this, the loudest voice is not necessarily the one to listen to. I said the loudest voice is not always the one to listen to. Some of you will get that about two weeks from next Thursday. <laughs> Heard about one preacher who wrote this in his, in his sermon notes. Yell loud, point weak. <laughs> Good. Hey, hear me this morning. We need to be very careful what we allow to come in through our ears and what we allow to go out through our mouth. I remember when I was just a little bit of kid in children's church, I remember the song that we used to sing, and it went something like this. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. There's a father up above looking down in tender love. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. There's a father up above looking down in tender love. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Might be a kid's song, but it's got a lot of truth. I'll be on the worship team next Sunday. <laughs> it's okay to say no. It's okay to say no to unqualified Opinions. Fifth and final thing I believe that we can say no to, and that is this. It's okay to say no to an unbalanced life. Amen. See, there are so many things that pull on us and demand our time. Parents, kids, spouses, work, special interests, commitments, church, school, hobbies, recreation. And if we're not very careful, we will allow whatever pulls on us the hardest to get most of our attention. Most people live unbalanced lives. They're burning both ends of the candle at the same time. I love the story about the professor who, who, who set a large empty glass jar in front of his class. Then he proceeded to place some very large rocks into the jar, as many as it would hold. He asked the class the question, is the jar full? And the class said, yes, the jar is full. Well, he then began to pour into the jar a bunch of little bitty tiny small pebbles, as much as the jar would hold. And he asked the class again, is the jar full? And the class said, yes, now it's full. Well, he then began to pour sand into the jar. And the sand made its way through the cracks and the crevices as much as it would hold. And once again, he asked the class, is the jar full? And, and everyone, yes, yes, it's finally full. But one last time, the professor took a bottle of water and he started pouring the water into the jar. And the water began to go down into the jar until it held no more. 
Once he finished, he asked his class if they understood the significance of the illustration. And an ancient student blurted out and said, yes, I, I, I know the significance. I know, I know the answer. No matter how full something is, you can always cram something more into it. And the professor scowled, no, no, no. That's not the significance of the illustration. The significance of the illustration, the professor said, is if you are going to get, if, if you're going to get it all in, you're going to have to put the big rocks in first. And so it is with us. So it is with, with us. The big rocks are the things that are most important to us. Our faith and our family. These are the big rocks. Everything else is just pebbles and sand. It's okay to say no to an unbalanced life. See, I've been at the bedside of so many people in the last 49 plus years. I've been there when they took their last breath. I've been there over and over. I've been there when they said their last words. Not one time have I ever heard anyone Lament the fact that they didn't spend more time at work. I've yet to hear anybody ask to see a picture of their big house or their fancy car. Never been there when they said, show me the balance in my bank account one last time. Hear me this morning, church. Put the big rocks in first or they won't fit in your life. It's okay to say no to an unbalanced life. Here's what I know. Only people who are well-disciplined and living according to proper priorities will be able to accomplish this. Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 17, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Pastor, what does the Lord want me to do? He wants you to say no to an unbalanced life. He wants you to make your faith and your family top priority. He wants you to place the big rocks in first. The takeaway for the message this morning is this. It's okay to say no when saying yes would be unwise. Father, I just pray that you'll take this this word this morning, or not the sermon that I put together, but Lord, the, in that sermon, Lord, the, the, the infallible, life-changing, life-altering, miracle-working word, let it get down into our heart. Let it get down into our spirit, oh God. God, I pray that you'll speak to us today as you've already spoken through your word, but you will confirm it through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name.